Hey guys, Ricardo with Fast Tech Performance and today I'm here to show you how to install the lowering springs on your 2016 Camaro. Alright guys, now the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and support the car, get the weight off the tires, so that we can get these lug nuts off and we can access everything we need to. Now that we've got the wheel out of the way, you're going to see these two main strut bolts holding the, the entire shock assembly to the knuckle. Those two bolts, this outer nut is a 24 millimeter, the bolt itself is a 21 millimeter, and back here you have a 10 millimeter, you have a plastic clip holding the, the wiring harness in place. I do suggest to remove the speed sensor, which is a 10 millimeter bolt, and that sensor pulls right out. And then you have the strut, the sway bar end link right over here, 18 millimeter nut right back there. Then we have the three bolts, three 13 millimeter bolts on the top side, so we'll go ahead and get started with removing everything. These bolts are on there really tight, so we'll take a little bit of force to get them off. But once you got them loose, it'll be pretty easy. Alright, we got those loose. We'll go and take the smaller stuff out now. Make sure we get it all out of the way. Tell me we have a bolt there. And a bolt there holding the brake line assembly. Now what I do is I always put the bolts back in place, put a couple threads in them, just so I make sure I know which ones go where. And there's the harness, it pulls right out. Now, as far as the wiring harness goes, you can take a pocket screwdriver or a trim tool like I have here, and there's a little spot that you can kind of get in between to pop the clip out of the way, so you can take that harness and pull it up out of the way, and just lay it over so we don't damage it. Then we'll take our 18 millimeter socket, and we'll get this end link out of the way. You get your bolt right there. Pull the end link out off to the side. And we'll put the bolt back in place just so we don't lose it and make sure we put it back where it goes. Since these are loose, what we'll do is we'll take our 24 millimeter socket. and pulling the rest of the way off. Put it back in place just so we don't lose it. Alright, now the reason I put them back in place is because on these bolts, as you can see, they're in there pretty good. They're in there pretty tight, so I can't move the strut. What GM did was they put them splines in here, so that way these are a little bit more difficult to come off. But we'll go ahead and take those off right now. You will need a hammer so you can, you can knock them out. I always put the bolt back, try and get it as flush as you can with the, with the bolt. As you can see, went ahead and got it loose here. And you see it's got a couple splines on there, it really kind of holds it in place. So we'll put that back together and off to the side. We'll do the same thing for the lower bolt and get that out of the way. Now we got our strut mount, our whole strut loose with the knuckle. We'll 
we'll go ahead and get that last bolt out. And the whole knuckle assembly will just kind of lay over to the side. Do be careful with this brake line. Just make sure it doesn't snag on anything. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the top side, take the three bolts out up top, and this whole thing All will right, drop out. Here we are on the top side. There's going to be three 13 millimeter screws. You're going to take those three out, and the whole strut assembly will fall out through the bottom. And when we go back together, you will see these plastic screws uh, mounting locations right here. Those will stay in place along with the other a strut assembly. You're going to want to make sure and hold the strut because if you don't hold the strut it is going to fall out through the bottom. Alright guys, now that we've got a strut assembly here on the ground, what I do suggest is installing a, a spring compressor. There are, these springs are under a little bit of tension, so unlike the fifth generation, you will need a spring compressor for these. Then going back together, this will be just about the same. Now the first thing you have to do is pop this cap off here. Take a simple screwdriver or your trim tool. And you remove that cap. That cap will then allow you to get to the nut that's on the inside holding the strut assembly together. And once we got our spring tool together, we're going to go and tighten it down a little bit, put a little bit of tension on it, hold it in place. Now that we have that tightened down, we're going to take our 18 millimeter socket and we're going to go and move the bolt that's in here. Now once you have that apart, we're going to take the top hat, and the lower hat. Now this uh, bump stop here, you will just go ahead and leave it the same, and uh, we're not going to have to make any modifications to it, so we'll go ahead and replace the spring. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use a spring compressor to compress the new spring so that way it fits in place. And you can get the mount and everything in place as well. Alright, now that we got the aftermarket spring ready to go back in, we're going to go and replace everything that it took out when we took out all the stock stuff apart. What I do is I take the lower mount and I line it up uh, with that with the new location. On the bottom side, there is a, a one location that you will fit it to. It's only one place it's going to go in there. So we'll take the mount, put it in place. It's the lower mount. And then we take the upper mount, put that in place also. And here's the nut. That nut is going to go right back in place. We'll get it started with a couple of threads. Then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Once you have that tightened down, you can go ahead and replace the cap so we don't forget that later. Then we'll take our spring compressor and we'll go and let that loose. Now, when you're letting it loose, you want to make sure that the spring kind of stays in place as best you can. You might have to move it off a little, little bit to the side. You just want to make sure that it stays put right where you want it. All right, now we have the front strut re assembly ready to go back in the car. All right, guys, now the strut assembly will go through the bottom of the uh, wheel well. Once we line it up, those plastic dowels should line up with where they previously were. If you can spin it, uh, this top strut mount a little bit just to get them lined up. 
Once you got them lined up in place, we'll take our bolts. And we'll put them back in place. Once we got all three started, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. All right, now that the top part of this strut assembly is all together, you'll see it kind of waves around a little freely here. That's completely normal. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start reassembling everything together. You want to make sure that you have the brake lines, the speed sensor, the sway bar end link out of the way so you can get the knuckle back in place. So we'll go ahead and start putting that, that together right now. And from once you got those back in place, you can take the speed sensor here, take that nut out, that bolt out where you had it, put the sensor back in place, put the bolt back in it, so that way it's not hanging around everywhere. Then we take the, the wiring harness, the connection here, and put it back in place with that clip. And that clip just snaps back in place. And we'll take our brake line bolt. We'll remove that and put the brake line back in place. We'll take the sway bar end link and put that back in place. Now that we got everything in place, we'll just go ahead and tighten everything down and we'll be done with the front. Now what you might have to do with these, with these uh, the knuckle bolts is that you might have to take your hammer and just kind of knock them back in place. Once those splines are started, the nut won't move. By doing that, it will allow you to, to put the bolt back in place and tighten everything down. Alright guys, so here we are on the back half of the car. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this front trailing arm and just go ahead and take this joint here and let it hang down to the bottom. You'll need to loosen the top side up over there. And you'll, this is the lower control arm right here, those two bolts. This one you'll just need to loosen. This one you will need to get, take completely out. Now this cover right here is blocking the bolt that you'll see for the shock. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and take that cover off and we'll be able to see everything we need. So we'll take our trim tool and take those little fittings out. Now that we have the cover out of the way, you can see this the bolt I'm talking about. We'll take our 18 millimeter wrench and we'll go ahead and nut. Break it loose. On the other side of the control arm is a welded on nut, so you won't have to worry about taking that off. So 
now that we got that loose, we'll loosen some of the other bolts as well. We'll take our 20, 20, 21 millimeter wrench and loosen the lower control arm. All you have to do is just loosen that bolt. You don't have to take it completely out. By loosening it, what you'll allow it to do is you'll allow the control arm, once we take this one out, the whole control arm will swing out, allowing that spring to drop right out. As I said before, we'll take our 18 millimeter wrench and we'll just loosen the, the front bolt of the trailing arm. This rear one we'll have to take completely out. Now once we get this bolt completely out, we can then get this lower control arm bolt out. Now we have that bolt out, take the trailer arm and just let it hang there. Now we'll work on getting this one. The other thing about this bolt is that there is a brake line right here that you will have to kind of move out of the way. But once you get that brake line out of the way, you can go and get access to that bolt. Now for that bolt, it's an 18 millimeter socket back here and a 15 millimeter up front. What we'll do is go ahead and break it loose. So we'll do is take a backup wrench here. Break that loose. Now that we got it loose, we just hold it with the side. Now, if you notice, I didn't take it completely out because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to support the control arm so that way once we get the spring, once we get it out, out of there, the spring doesn't just pop it right completely out. So what I recommend doing is taking a jack and putting a little bit of pressure on the control arm just so we can get all the stuff out. Once you got a little bit of pressure on the control arm, you can then take the shock bolt out. And then we'll take that lower control arm bolt out. Now, like I said, you will just have to get it past the brake line, but once you get it past the brake line, it pops right out. Now that we got everything loose, everything almost out of the way, we'll go ahead and take our jack and we'll lower it slowly. As you can see, this spring's already ready to come out. We'll lower it enough so that way we can get the spring completely out. All right, now that we're ready to go back in with the new spring, we got the right mounts on the bottom and the one on the top. The one that does make a difference is the one on the bottom. You'll see this little little tab right here. That's going to go on the inside of the control arm. So when we take our spring and mount, it's going to go right back in place. Then we'll take our jack and start jacking the spring back in place.
you're going back together, we want to make sure that everything lines up correctly so that we don't have any issues with binding and everything goes smoothly. Now what I've done is I've lined up the lower shock mount so that way you can get that bolt started. It'll kind of hold the control arm there in place a little bit better so that way we can get our jack out of the way. So now we can get the jack out of the way. Move that off to the side. So now what we'll do is we'll line up this lower control arm mount. We'll line that up. Once we get that lined up, we'll go and tighten the inner lower control arm. We'll double check the shock and we'll put the trailing arm back in place and we'll be finished.